G'day and welcome to the Space Engineers Automatons beta test. I'm going to do a quick run through of some of the bigger changes that are present in this beta test and which bits I'm kind of most excited about, which oddly enough aren't really the autopilot and drone changes. They're actually the event controller, which is this block in between these pistons here. And the reason this block excites me so much is because I cannot, for the life of me, without extreme discomfort, write scripts. So having an if this then that type setup with a block is something that I'm much more capable of. And this is going to massively enhance the things that I can do. And because scripts aren't easily usable on things like Xbox, this is going to massively expand the capabilities there too. And I'm sure I'm not alone in the oh, when it comes to scripts, which is a sound of horror in case it sounds weird through my microphone. Uh, but the event controller, the way this works is we pick one of the predetermined events and then we can determine an action that happens after the event. So we can pick an altitude, we can pick an angle changed for a rotor or a hinge, connector connected now we can instead of having to click recharge mode for batteries stockpile for tanks and lock connector we can just lock the connector and that will automatically trigger this event controller to do those things for us which is really nice door open for your airlocks gas tank filled percent which we'll look at shortly landing gear locked etc etc so what i'm going to look at first is piston position percent so we're going to start with equal or greater than 50%. And we're going to use the first piston here. So we've added piston one. And what we're going to do is we're going to select actions, which is going to be this first light panel, toggle off when it reaches 50%, toggle on when it comes back. So if I press this button to extend it, we'll see that that light We'll switch off. And as it comes back down, when we retract it, it'll turn back on. And you can see as the piston extends and the event controller changes its condition, the lighting on it changes as well. It's light blue when it's active, as in when the condition is met, and it is dark blue when the condition is not met. Another thing we can do is we can add more than one piston to this. So let's add all of them. And we can actually add more things to the action bar. Unlike sensors and vents, we actually have multiple hot bars here. I don't know if this is a bug or if this is on purpose, but if this is on purpose, I really, 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 really hope that Kane will add this function to sensors so that we can have more than one action from a sensor without needing a timer block. Because often I use a timer block just to direct an action at two different things. Whereas if I could just have it on a toolbar, that would be amazing. So we can go second toolbar, toggle off, toggle on, third toolbar, do the same with this one. Now all the lights are going to be impacted. So with the way this is currently set up, if any of the pistons go beyond 50%, all of the lights will turn off. As you can see. And if we push this one up above it, retract this one, it's going to turn back on. This is the thing that I'm not sure if this is behaving as it's intended, but the way this appears to work is much like crossing the threshold of a sensor. With a sensor, if you're already inside the sensor field, you don't change the state of that sensor. It's only when you cross the threshold to it. So with these pistons, when one crosses the threshold, it changes the state of the event controller but if it doesn't cross the threshold nothing changes so we've still got this one up here yet if i put any of the others up while they're on it's going to turn them off if we put all of them up and i retract any of them the lights will turn back on because it's crossing that threshold as i said i'm not certain if this is intended behavior but this is what i'm observing at the moment i'm going to save doing a full tutorial for this for whatever date these are in when we get to the full release of this update. Now, this isn't the only way that these can behave. There is also an option way down the bottom here with and called AND gate. The first action is triggered if each block meets the condition. 
else the second action is triggered. To get the light to turn off, we need all of them across. Another use for event controllers is going to be situations where you need emergency power. So you'll use, say, checking the battery state for how much power it's got, waiting till it gets below a certain level, and at that point the event controller triggers, turns on all your hydrogen engines, starts burning your hydrogen. Then you could have a separate event controller checking your hydrogen tanks when they get to a certain level. Then they switch off the engines and that sort of thing. You can do so much automation of your base with these event controllers. And I, there are so many things that I have thought about doing and I bet there are so many more that haven't been thought of yet. But one of the really little things that I like is that this is going to help with one of the things that's always bugged me about airlocks. It's really, really hard in space engineers to have an oxygen tank that doesn't get completely full and burn all your ice in the process of filling it. And that means when you go through an airlock, you can't actually depressurize the airlock because there's no space in a tank to put that gas. But with the event controller, we can set this up so that that is the case. So if we have gas tank filled as our percentage, then we grab the oxygen tank, add block, and we say, let's not fill more than 50%. So at any point equal or greater than 50%, what we want it to do is grab our O2H2 generator and toggle it off. If it gets below 50%, we want to toggle it on. Some of you might notice an issue with this, which is in the event that we're just barely going below, barely going above, we're going to have the O2H2 gen toggle on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off repeatedly. You could either have a timer that turns off the event controller periodically so that it only switches on occasionally or just run two event controllers. One with a threshold that's lower and one with that's higher. So say set it at 40% to switch on and 60% to switch off. Then there's a 20% leeway. Means more blocks, but it means you won't have that on off on off on off which is going to be more common if you're using this to set up say batteries so now that we've got that in place let's grab the o2h2 gen let's turn it on if we have a look at this tank i've got build vision active in this world just for convenience sake the tank is now up to 50 percent you briefly heard the o2h2 gen turn on and now it's off if i vent this space and allow it to Fill again, we'll briefly hear the O2H2 gen turn on and fill it back up. So it's a really nice way of making sure that you've got a tank that's got room for an airlock, which just one of too many uses that I've thought of for the event controller so far and why I'm so excited about that block. Before we get to the autopilot type blocks, there are two other biggish changes that I think are important to look at. One is a couple of changes to the custom turret controller block. First of all, in my custom turret controller block tutorial, that's a mouthful, uh, <laughs> I mentioned that when you are controlling a custom turret controller, you cannot drive a vehicle. That has been fixed. Also, the custom turret controller can now do something really quite clever. It can become a solar tracker. So what we need to do is set up the azimuth rotor, the elevation rotor, which is in this case is a hinge, and in this beta, hopefully this is fixed for the release, but in this beta, you must select a camera. If you do not select a camera here, your game will crash. <laughs> it's literally that bad. For a solar tracking thing, you probably don't need these to be super fast, so we can go like two. So it's nice and slow, so we can see this and it doesn't jiggle around like crazy. And then we can select always aim at sun. If you don't see always aim at sun as an option here, it's because you haven't added a camera here. The reason I discovered you could crash it, even though that button doesn't exist, is you can still get the button from a cockpit. So don't do what Donny don't does, kids. <laughs> so let's select always aim at sun. And you'll see it's rotating around. It's finding the sun and it's at a more appropriate speed. And there we go. What you might notice is that the camera block actually points at the sun, which means you need the camera block on the correct facing to get your solar panels in the maximum sunlight. If I had the camera block on the end here, it'd be kind of useless because I'd be pointing the solar panels perfectly away from the sun. That, that is a really nice addition. Again, especially an ad for those who don't like using scripts or who can't use scripts. Another nice little addition 
is that small grid ejectors are no more. They are now connectors. Which is a good thing, because it means we can make much, 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 much smaller drones. Having a tiny connector... Oops, I blew a hole in the ground. Uh, <laughs> having a tiny connector means you can make a drone that can rearm itself, refuel itself, and do things like that without having a 3x3x2 three by three by size block. There are a few things I want to highlight about this. One, these connectors do not match up to the other connectors at all. You cannot connect a small connector to anything other than a small connector. It doesn't attach to the normal small grid connectors, and it doesn't attach to the large grid ones. Which I think is kind of appropriate. It makes sense. They are also limited to the same restrictions of your standard small grid, small cargo system. So, what I mean by that is large objects cannot pass through them. We cannot move things like, if we have a look here, can I move things like oxygen bottles, because those are stacked in that medium cargo container up the top over here. Can move ammo though, can't move bulletproof glass, can move ore. So you can move anything that's small can go through, anything that's large cannot. So keep that in mind if you were planning on using this for something that might need that, it's not going to work. And lastly, connectors are ejectors. They've always been ejectors, so you, we haven't lost the ejector functionality. All you need to do is select the connector and select throw out. If you push stuff into that connector, or if you select it on collect all after a sorter to make sure you're only collecting the stuff you want, it'll keep dumping it out. Because we've been able to do the same sort of thing on large grid setups with a connector forever. Or at least as long as I can remember. And finally we come to our autopilot type blocks. These are going to make player made weapons, so your grid based missiles and bombs, so much easier. You're going to be able to make things that can hit targets with so much greater ease, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be devastating, but it's going to be amazing. At the moment, a few of the behaviours that exist in the beta did not work for me. Like straight up would just no. Uh, I could not get them to behave at all or even consistently for some of them, but the combat behaviours are mostly working pretty well. To set these up, what we need are a pair of blocks. So with these automation blocks, we've got move blocks, we've got defensive combat blocks, we've got offensive combat blocks, basic blocks, and an AI recorder which is for setting up complex paths and waypoints similar to the old autopilot system or the existing autopilot system. You can have more than one type of each block on your grid but you can only have one of each type of block active at a time. In this case I have a move block over here and I have made sure that it's oriented correctly. You can see there is an F on the front, there is an arrow symbol on the side pointing towards the front and also an L saying it's the left and on the other side there's an R saying it's right and then a nice rear panel so you know which way this is pointed so this will help you orient the missile, the drone, whatever you're building correctly to the movement controller block so what we need to do to make this thing functional is we need to go in here select our move block and set it up. You will get warnings and errors over here. At the moment some of them are a bit overly sensitive. That was quite good timing there from the little <laughs> carrier over there burning hole in the floor. Uh, speaking of sensitive. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our move block and we're gonna set it up. We're gonna make this into a missile which means we want it to go fast. It can align to planetary gravity, sure. We want collision avoidance off because it's going to collide with something. These settings seem reasonable for the time being. Keep 25 meters off the ground, that's probably going to help it not run into things. So that's the movement part. The combat behavior part of it is this block. So we're going to go down here and we're going to make sure it's going to attack enemies. It can attack the closest. Search interval, we'll reduce that just for 
making things happen a bit more quickly. Threatening subsystem default, you can change this to weapons, propulsion or power systems just like you can with turrets. And our attack pattern, we have circle and orbit, we have stay at range, we have hit and run or we have intercept. And intercept is what we want here. Guidance type basic, that's fine. And we want to, there we go. We can override the collision avoidance set, setting of the move controller anyway. So now we need to enable the AI behavior for this. Let's enable the combat part and we'll enable the movement part. This is currently locked to the ground. So if I unlock it from the ground, it's going to do nothing. <laughs> it's just going to hover there. The reason for that is it can't actually target this enemy that's just over the ridge there. But I have a way to make it do that. I'm just going to cheekily use a little build vision and we're going to give it a little bit of a thruster override. Once it gets high enough, let's track it. Once it gets high enough, it should pick up that target and it's going to ignore my thrust override and fix it. So now we can launch missiles up into the air and then have them ram into a target. I really hope it hits. Oh yeah. <laughs> So you can use overrides, you can use other methods to get these up high into the sky, but this is a way to get missiles that are player made really, really easily. So this one's already set up the same way. Unlock, override, and it should do the same thing. I really hope. Uh oh. Yay! <laughs> that's gonna be amazing to watch in action like seeing these things all launch up just using a simple override get up high enough that they can hit a target oh we heard that there it is <laughs> so that's our intercept behavior next up let's have a look at some of the other options we've got so we'll go for instead of intercept let's go for hit and run. So this is going to be the sort of strafing attack and then dive off style of attack profile. And in this one we're going to need these fixed weapons. These bo these have Gatling guns which have some ammo in them. So we're going to add those. Same. Closest priority. Closest target as priority. AI behavior on. Movement. AI behavior on. So we're going to switch lock and we're going to toggle an override. And away it'll go. I'm going to follow this one though. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I think it just started playing battle music for a second there. So it feels like it's gotten itself close enough. Ooh. So there might be a little problem that we forgot to set up here. I say we. Me. I forgot to set up here. We probably want collision avoidance on. <laughs> so this is a good... E good opportunity to have a look at something else which is these give us a nice status of what they're up to when we look into the info area of the control panel so the movement controller is telling it's it's retreating from npc acs thunderbird one and it is maintaining a minimum altitude so once it's retreated far enough it'll turn around and it should attempt another attack run but it might get stuck as you can see there's a good reason why keen chose to put this as a beta <laughs> let's have a look at the next behaviors circle slash orbit we can have it circle at let's say 370 meters yes we're in planetary gravity so let's select that so it does a more sensible circling pattern fire static weapons our warfare gatling guns turn the ai behavior on for our move let's again increase the speed we'll increase the altitude a bit this time and collision avoidance on ai behavior on unlock from ground and override to launch this little rocket see how it does. So there we go. Shooting at our target. It's not really moving around, but maybe I've set up something wrong. So it's locked its target. It's searching for another enemy. It's locking again. Having this information provided here is really quite handy for troubleshooting if we're running into problems. And also, I think it's going to be incredibly valuable for people testing with the beta to provide feedback to Keen for seeing where things go wrong being able to provide useful info. So hopefully they keep all its added information here. 
So it looks like it's now trying to move around to get to do a bit of its orbital behavior. Personally, I like this orbit behavior to be a bit more aggressive, but maybe I've set something up wrong and that's why it's not doing it quite so much. I think it might have run out of ammo. Uh, and then we've got the stay at range behavior, which is kind of similar, where it's going to try and hold a range, but unless you enable evasive maneuvers, it may just stick right where it needs, right where it wants to be. So that's a few of the combat behaviors. At the moment, I think the intercept one is the one that I'm most excited about because it's also the one that seems to be working the best. The other behaviors are still a little inconsistent. Sometimes they seem to be working well and sometimes not so much. Now, I'm going to use one of my little friends here, which is a miniature little guppy, to show off one of the last little things that's really quite cool. Why don't we use a basic task block to get a drone to follow us? So we set this to on, it's set to follow player, and set it to follow me. Now the move block, we're going to turn that on, and we're going to turn collision avoidance on as well. And now, this little guppy friend should follow me. Come on. Come on. There you go. So this sort of thing could be quite handy if you're in a situation where, I don't know, maybe you want to have a drone follow you that's got turrets on it so it can shoot down on enemies that you can't quite see. Maybe you want a spotlight that follows you because you're such a star you always want to be in the spotlight. I don't know. There are plenty of reasons you could come up with for why you want a drone to follow you. Or you might want to just be really annoying to someone, set the drone up to follow them, and play fun music. That... <laughs> the opportunities are endless. Once the full release comes out, I will be sure to do an in-depth breakdown of each of these blocks and the autopilot behaviors, see where some of the issues still lie, see where we can, what we can do to mitigate them and get the best performance possible. I think it's a bit early for us to do that just yet. But that is something that I am definitely doing in the future. So there's all that and plenty more to come. And I will see you then. I'm gonna launch another missile. Oh yeah, these are gonna be so much fun to use. <laughs> uh, oh well. Even when they're that lacking in spectacle, I think they'll still be fun to use.